السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them To bless every one of us And to grant us every form of goodness Ameen My beloved brothers and sisters Many times in life we fail to progress because we are stuck in the past. And this is not only true when it comes to our own faults and our own sins, but even with others. At times it is in the best of your interests to let go of something that looks like you cannot let it go. But in order for you to progress, you must let it go. Imagine a person who is owed a thousand rands and then and obviously if he is owed a thousand rands legitimately he can ask for it he can pursue it legally he can actually take up a lot in order to get it but is it worth the drama that's the question why should i pay ten thousand rands in order to get back a thousand rands one might say well it's to prove a point you pay a price to prove points remember that we as Muslims are taught that you must always weigh the pros and cons and allow the lesser of the two evils if you have no third option. Remember that. And this is something very interesting because many people are bogged down in life. They simply cannot move forward. You lost your job, you were fired unceremoniously and you want to get back at your old boss. By that occupation that you've now engaged in of getting back to your old boss, you have stopped your eyes from looking ahead at jobs that are glaring you in your face simply because you did not move on. It's okay. You're not the first person to lose your job. You're going through a tough time. Trust me, we've all been through tough times. It might last a year. It might last five years. It might last 10 years, but it will last longer if you don't progress and you don't look at the future. Shine your eyes and take a look at the glass in front of you that shows you the whole road that you don't even want to walk on. We become lazy and sad simply because we've had something traumatic that happened in our lives. Maybe a scare in our health, maybe a robbery we've had, maybe someone we've lost. May Allah grant our loved ones Jannah. Or it could be anything else. My brothers, my sisters, I am here to tell you that it's not the end of the road. Look up and move forward. If, it, if at all you want to look back, it should only be to learn a lesson, but not to get stuck in it in such a way that you don't move forward. Remember this. So the Prophet wasallam, at the time of the victory of Mecca, which is a powerful example, he came into Mecca with an army of tens of thousands. And what happened? The people of Mecca who had harmed the Muslims, they had usurped their wealth, they had abused them, they had killed many of them, and so on. Here comes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he asks them the famous question, O people of Quraysh, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? Imagine someone who's harmed to that degree. I don't even want to get into it, but it's very bad. And then here comes the messenger with all the power saying, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? Imagine if a guy today from amongst us had to tell another who has killed from his family or usurped the wealth, driven them out of their homes for years on end. And he comes one day powerfully. What do you think I'm going to do to you today? They looked at him and says, you're a good man, the son of a good man. Oh, now suddenly I'm a good man. You see, all these years I was not a good man. Now he's, they said, well, you know, we expect goodness. What would we expect? He says, No retribution today. Go, you are free. I'm going to tell you what Yusuf alayhi salam told his brothers. No retribution against you. Go, you are free. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. If the Prophet sallallahu wanted, he could have actually got every single one of them back. Every one of them. But no. There was a bigger picture. Let's move forward. Let's progress. We have an ummah to serve. We have families. We have relatives here. We have so much here. And you know what? A lot of these people are not Muslim. By us showing them the true teachings of Islam, they will enter the fold of Islam. And that's exactly what they did. Today, when people look at us, Muslims turn away from Islam because they let down by us. May Allah not do that to us. 
Today, when people look at us, they are discouraged. Today, we break relations of our families, ourselves. Here is the Prophet ﷺ saying, you know what? Let's make peace. Move forward from today. Don't go back. He never, ever looked back. As a result, it was considered true victory. What is the true victory? Don't look back. Look forward. There is a lot to achieve. Yes, yes, yes. You need to understand if you were bitten from one angle, you will learn a lesson and not be bitten again from the same angle again. But at the same time, you need to know, just keep moving. I have a brother, very recent story, brother in Islam. He lost a job just before this COVID thing happened. And he told me, my brother, I want to get back at this. These people, I know a lot about them and I really want to nail them. And I told him, my brother, instead of nailing people, you'd rather concentrate on yourself. By me nailing someone, it's not going to give me any goodness. Will it give you a job? No, you get a bad name. People won't want to employ you anyway. So what should I do? Look forward, make dua to Allah. Ask Allah, turn to Allah. He says, but I've been asking Allah for so many years for an increment. And instead, he's given me the loss of a job. You see, do you trust Allah's plan? That's the question. Do you trust Allah's plan? You've been making dua for an increment for so long and suddenly you lost a job. So you think, look, Allah's doing the opposite. Subhanallah. I just told him, I said, brother, you know what? Consider this. If you're holding tight to a few coins with one hand and Allah wants to give you two handfuls of gold coins, the first thing he needs to do is to make you open his hand so that these coins go or at least your hands are now opened. In the process, you might lose these coins. Make dua, bear patience, don't worry. If the Prophet ﷺ went through it, who are we? We will go through even more. And he told me, well, that's the mantra that all of you guys utter. Whenever we are in difficulty, I said, well, we are taught that and you must believe that. Be convinced. Don't ever leave Allah at the time of your hardship. Never blame Allah. No way. Allah tells you clearly, you have harm and evil. It's not my doing. It's yours or man's doing. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Allah makes it clear that all this chaos and corruption and all nonsense you see on earth, it has become apparent because of the handiwork of mankind. You guys did it, not me. Allah says, don't blame me for the evil. People say, why does Allah allow murder? Who murdered? Was it not a human being? Why blame Allah for someone else's crimes? Well, then they might say, well, what was the sin of the innocent child who was murdered? You say, you know what? Allah will give justice, but there was someone who murdered the child. It's human beings who committed that crime. The fact that Allah knew it in advance does not make him guilty of being merciless when he is the most merciful. He says to us, I will provide for those who believe and those who don't believe. That's what he says in the Quran. In this world, I will provide for those who believe and those who don't believe. The difference is those who believe will have the hereafter. Those who don't believe, they won't have the hereafter because they don't believe in it.